Streaming now, this is the Wood TV Live Desk. Well, good evening, everyone. Phil Panarski here with the Wood TV Live Desk. Hope you're having a great night so far. Another great night for football, although a little cold, a little rainy, a little windy. It's a rather wet start to your Week 8 of Football Frenzy, folks. We're just about 20 minutes away from the start of the big show over on News 8 coming up at 11. Jack Doles and his entire crew will have highlights, sounds, everything you need to know from up to 20 games across West Michigan tonight. But before that, as you know, we do every week here on the Live Desk we're going to give you a little bit of a sneak peek of some of the games and things you can expect to see on the big show coming up. And of course, we're going to start off talking about our three spotlight games of the week. First up, we have the South Christian Sailors taking on the Central Catholic Cougars. Both teams are 6-1 and one on the year and 5-0 and oh in the OK Gold Conference. The winner of this game would at least clinch a share of the conference title in 2023. The Cougars are attempting to avenge last year's 36 to 34 loss to the Sailors. And that next game on your screens features the Rams of Rockford traveling to Granville to take on the Bulldogs. Rockford has been about as impressive as anyone this year really going into this game, but Granville is also playing some of the best ball as of late. Fun fact though, Granville was actually the last team in the OK Red Conference to beat Rockford in conference play. That happened all the way back in 2019. And finally, your last spotlight game of the night, Saugatuck hosted Lawton in the final spotlight game of week eight. The Trailblazers have had an amazing turnaround this season. This team was two and six last year, if you can believe it or not, and now stands seven and zero. Oh, but they're facing a tough Blue Devils team that with a win tonight could or would win at least a share of the Southwestern Athletic Conference Championship. And they've had Saugatuck's number really in the past, winning the previous three meetings between the two schools and again these games and about 17 others will be shown over on News 8 at 11 which is just over 20 minutes away at this point we're going to be bringing you right up into that so be sure to stick around here on the live desk and of course we do have some highlights we do every single week to kind of hold you over let's start with Portage Central taking on Kalamazoo Central now the Mustangs we're going to pick this game up. Mustangs trailing early in this one, but Thomas Lane gets them in great position with this 35-yard run here, making a lot of players miss before finally being brought down. And he, he would finish what he started just a few plays later, taking the pitch from Peyton Porter for the score to tie the game. Now, next ported central possession. They would look to do it again. Deja vu a bit. Here's another big run, this one by Nick Green for 45 yards. He would get stopped beforehand. This would, though, lead to a short touchdown run by Cameron Schernestein. Mustangs take a 13-7 lead, and they really wouldn't look back. Portage Central rolls in this one, winning 35-13. Let's head to Paw, Paw where the Red Wolves are taking on the Bulldogs of Otsego High School, picking up in the game in the second half now, where Paw, Paw has a big lead already, but Otsego is trying to make some magic happen. They would go to the end zone, but Paw Paw's Nathan Lemire comes up with a huge play there. First play on the ensuing position, it's P.J. DeYoung taking the handoff here. Finds a crease, and it's off to the races. 65 yards for DeYoung here before he is taken down. Same drive here, and the Red Wolves would capitalize on DeYoung's hard work. Malachi Davis goes in for six here on the short carry. That would make it 41-6 to six in favor of Paw Paw, and in the fourth quarter now, well, game already well out of reach, and the Red Wolves would just tack on another score. A little bit of trickery there. Gunnar Goodell fakes it, hands it off. And it would end up being Landon Bull scoring on that one. And that would be your final as Paw Paw remains undefeated on the year, winning 47-6. to They head over to Niles next week with the Wolverine Conference Championship on the line. And how about another game? Mona Shore is taking on Zeeland West, and this was a close one all throughout. Sailors quarterback Jonathan Pittman drops back to pass here. Plenty of time, moves around a bit, and launches an absolute bomb to the end zone where, Matt, where Micah Carr fell. Comes down with it 14 to nothing. Mona Shores in this one fourth quarter. Zealand West trying to tack on another score. Trenton Bullhouse throws the slant over the middle to Jacob McLaren. And he would go in for the touchdown. That would cut it to eight, but unfortunately for the Ducks, that would be all she wrote. The Sailors would go on to just run out the rest of the clock. And their undefeated season for the Ducks comes to an end tonight at the hands of the Sailors, 14 to six. And we do have one last game to show you. East Grand Rapids taking on Byron Center. Really great game here as well. Both teams battling for at least a share of the OK White Conference tonight. Second quarter now, Landon Tungate, the quarterback for the Bulldogs, takes a snap, follows his blockers all the way in for touchdown. Byron Center up six. Now, with a, now up by nine in the fourth quarter are the Bulldogs, but the Pioneers are fighting back 
find themselves in a third and long, however, would turn into fourth down. And a great pass breakup by Isaac Lee on that last one. And then an even better interception on this one. Incredible play by Lee. Really would shut the door on that one. And the Pioneers would go down as Byron Center wins this one 9 to nothing. And again, we will have these highlights as well as so much more coming up in just a little bit on the full frenzy at 11. And we are just now starting to see some of the scores from a lot of the games from across West Michigan coming in. I uh, want to bring you them now. And again, these are all available over on our website, woodtv.com. You can check them out at any time, really, and really keep up with them all throughout the night. Uh, just taking a look at some of them, again, uh, Forest Hills Northern defeated Northview 34-20. to That Mona Shores Zealand West game, we just brought you the highlights of 14-6. to As I mentioned, Muskegon putting the hurt on Union there, 51-6. to Coopersville dominating Holland Christian 34 to 22 Greenville beating Grand Rapids Christian 35 to 13 these are just some of the games again and some of them may not say final just yet we are expecting to get a lot more of the finals coming up uh, at the top of the hour so just continue to keep refreshing if you're watching it and you want to know the ending scores to a lot of these games this is just a quick look at that we're bringing you here on the live desk again that Rockford and Granville game uh, Rockford continues to dominate all season long, 34-13 to 13 in that one. Can't wait to see the highlights. That is going to be a very exciting one. And again, you can find all of these right now over on our website, woodtv.com, at any time. And while you're doing that, you may also want to check out your play of the week from week seven last week. We de debuted them here on the live desk on Monday, as we do every single week. And we're ready to show you this play again from, again, Rockford. We're always talking about Rockford. It's Rockford's Lewis Bosher and Samuel Cummings. East Kent when punting the ball last week here and it's first blocked by Bosher and then scooped up by Cummings takes it all the way in for the score a special play for these special teams the Rams would go on to dominate this one 55 to nothing over the Falcons one more look at it here Cummings taking the ball off the deflection and running it in for six this play beat out two other outstanding plays and got about 62 percent of the total votes and so we just wanted to send our congrats to Lewis and Samuel. You guys are Week 7's top play. And as a reminder, every Monday afternoon, the sports team joins me here on the live desk and we unveil each week's top three plays and allow you the chance to vote for your favorite. So again, be sure to tune in for that. We only have a couple weeks left of Frenzy, so you're definitely going to want to check that out and make sure you do vote. You can do that on our website as well. And as we do every single week, we are going to leave you with a little bit of an update from our Football Frenzy Tailgate Food Drive, one of the best parts of what we do here at News 8. The Daybreak crew was at Jenison High School this morning, home of the Wildcats, and they just had some incredible showings from each school. Uh, we've had them all throughout the season, really, and this one was no different. Students collected an incredible f about 1,400 pounds of food today that will be going to local food pantries to help families in need. And, you know, this need is especially great right now as we're starting to see the weather kind of get a little colder and everything like that. So definitely great to see there. And this is a stat that I just love bringing up every single week. You know, last year uh, we had a record in the tailgate, about 16,000 pounds of food total. Well, this year already, and bear in mind, we still have one week left of the tailgate. We've already raised well over 53,000 pounds of food, well over three times the total amount. And again, we do have that one last week left. Next week, the Daybreak crew will be at West Catholic High School. Let's see how far they can push the total. And one last time, if you would like a chance to kind of get in on the action and really uh, help out with the food drive, you can definitely do so right now. You don't have to be a student at one of these high schools we visit. You can do so right now just by scanning that QR code that you see on your screen right there. It'll take you directly to everything you need to know right now and helping out Feeding America, of course. And of course, this is also over on our website that you can check out and uh, anytime uh, that you're on the website, everything you need to know is right underneath the Frenzy tag. Just head on over to woodtv.com. And again, it's another incredible uh, start to the football weekend. Again, a lot of great highlights coming up in about just under 15 minutes. So we're leading you right directly into that. Make sure you tune into News 8 at 11 in case it's a little late. You can't really stay up for it. Well, don't worry. The full frenzy will be over on our website, woodtv.com as well, coming up in just a little bit once it's done airing. Uh, yeah, no, this is going to lead into a great weekend of college football and professional football as well. Number two, Michigan is going to host Indiana tomorrow at noon. Michigan State heading to Rutgers. 
Cougars. Central Michigan will take on Akron. Western is battling it out with Miami of Ohio. That game is at 3.30 tomorrow. And really the big one for us here in West Michigan down in Allendale as GVSU hosts Ferris State in that game. And then, of course, on Sunday, your NFC North leading Detroit Lions. Uh, never get tired of saying that, really. They'll be taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers down in Florida, and that game is at 425 Eastern. And I do think that is going to wrap things up for us here tonight on the live desk. Again, uh, we're just about 12 minutes away from the start of the full frenzy, so make sure you stay tuned for that. And again, you'll be able to find all of the highlights at any time over on our website, woodtv.com. I want to thank everybody so much for tuning into this latest edition of the Wood TV Live desk. I'm Phil Panarski, and we hope you have a great rest of your day.